한국 같은 경우는 전쟁이라고 생각 생각해요 대회를. It would be a shocking upset. The Korean fans expect a Korean team to win the world championship. I've been playing League of Legends for such a long time now. I've taken part in three different World Championships with three different teams. Sometimes I want to move on, but at the same time I'm still like, no dude, you cannot leave. You have to win that World Championship. I started playing video games really early, at the age of two. My brother wanted someone to play with him, but I was really young and I didn't even know how to hold the remote. When I was 15, any free time I had, I was spending it on playing video games. And my brother was always pushing me towards gaming. And I was, well, but I know that mom and dad won't be happy with that. As you say, don't worry, just, I know that you're talented, so just go ahead. When I graduated, when I was 18, and I had like three, four months to decide what I want to do. And I didn't think about what I wanted to do at all. All I did was playing League of Legends since I wake up until it's uh, the evening and I go out with friends. I would play like six, seven, eight hours a day and I would never think about what I want to study. I would not research what kind of job I want. I would just play and go out, play and go out. And that's when I became kind of good after three months playing like that. x -A has been around for a really long time. He was actually a top laner in the season one world championship. And then, honestly, Fnatic took a bit of a dive, and I think Peke did as well. The big turning point where everyone really remembered again who Peke was, was at IM Katowice, when he backdoored the Nexus on Cassidy. When they were delayed, they got two in inhibitors down, and they are just gonna pile straight up towards those super minions in the base. You can see there's coming in there, Peke is desperately up towards the Nexus. Kevin is gonna oh be able to go into it. Peke is trying to take the Nexus down. Is anyone gonna be able to deal with this one? He's very low. No! I had a completely different nickname before joining League of Legends. I was playing Warcraft 3. I was quite famous in France because I had the title of the French champion. And I didn't want people to recognize me. So I decided to take another nickname. Yellow because I'm Asian. So it sounds a bit racist, but I like making those funny jokes. I was born in France, but my parents are Cambodian. They were born there. At the age of 15, there was a war. C'était le régime Pol Pot, le régime Khmer Rouge. Là, c'est la photo de ma mère, que heureusement j'ai encore la photo pour connaître son visage. On n'a pas de. Je ne connais pas l'amour des parents. Et puis arrivé là, j'étais travaillé dur et pour fonder la famille. Et malgré ça, je fais quand même tous les efforts pour élever mes enfants avec ma femme comme il faut. Tout donner un amour à mes, mes enfants que je pourrais, que je n'avais pas. When I decided I want to be a pro gamer, it was a hard choice. At that time, eSport was really young. It was not growing tremendously like it is right now. If I ever win a world championship, it would prove to my dad, this is what I've done, this is what I've accomplished. And now you can be proud, even though I know he's already proud of me.
When we were putting League of Legends out, we knew that the game's central motivators were similar and sort of akin to sports. But I don't think we were ever very confident that a large percentage of our audience would actually be interested in experiencing it like a sport. The season one patch, essentially, where we started the concept of seasons, is really when the competitive scene started to take off. League of Legends right now here on the main stage. Before that, it seems like the competitive or esports side was more like a hidden thing. The tournaments were like made on the forums, like some admin would make a forum and say like, if you want to register, send me a message and you can play this tournament. In the old days of playing League of Legends, the UI was not nearly as good. There were so many bugs, all the champions were so much stronger. They're just champions that can just dodge tower hits. It was just really chaotic back then. They announced this solo queue system where you can go up in the ladder and everyone will see you if you're on the top. You could always see my name, I was always like trying to fight for the number one spot. It wasn't about being a business, it wasn't about making money. We just wanted to win. League of Legends was a very different game back in season one. I guess the word meta still kind of fit. Counterlogic Gaming, the first teams at WCG were all very high solo queue players and it was just about all-star play, you being the best in your lane. The meta of different regions was pronounced, and so a lot of players in, say, North America thought that there was a particular optimal way of playing, and a lot of it related to big champion bruisers and getting five-on-five -five team comps. But then Europe had evolved two players going into the bot lane and having support shield an AD carry. Europe also uh, started to popularize the double AP comp, which Fnatic was really using a lot of in Season 1. Back at Season 1, I was dreaming all the time. How cool would it be to win all the tournaments? How cool would it be if someone sponsored you for a lot of money and you can just do this? How cool would it be to win DreamHack? Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the AMIA Convention Center, Jönköping, Sweden. We are here for the DreamHack Summer 2011 Championship Game. 50 grand going to the first team, 10k per player. That, as you like to say, doesn't suck. The production for Season 1 Finals was really scrappy from sort of a production value standpoint. Esports was a sort of bare bones thing. It was pretty janky overall. Anytime you see a graphic, anytime you see sounds, like all those things had to be like handmade and put into the show. None of that all existed. It was faces in a game, and that was literally it. Just the uh, energy from the spectators and the casting was a lot less. And I think they're just gonna come through and just crush faces. Freak wasn't as good as he is now. Let's just put it that way. But it really didn't matter because what people wanted to watch was competitive League of Legends being played by the best players in the world. Going into DreamHack, I thought that tournament was the end-all be-all. As a, like an 18-year-old or 17-year-old, $100,000 is a lot of money. At the time, it was the most amazing thing I'd seen, eSport-wise. That was the first time we had a real spectator client, so we could see the items during a game. We could see the score at the top of the screen. And we are good to go with the first game of the Grand Final. Shushay out in front. My team reached the finals big, big against final. Fnatic. This could decide what's going to happen in this game. First kill comes out from PK. Yellow Star is in the middle of it all, but he is surely a dead man. During that final match, I was standing in the base and I shoot an arrow with Ash and I hit someone all across the map in the opposite oh, side. And this was probably the best move I've done in my whole career. I remember who impressed me the most was Peke and Shushay. He's doing a lot of damage to PK picking up a double kill now. Set is just going to stop a very nice sear from Shushay. And it looks like three have now fallen for Triple A. Oh my. going to win the season one championship. After winning in season one, I'm in my bed the next day. And it's so hard to sleep because I think I still had a lot of adrenaline on my body from the last day. And I was thinking, I cannot believe I was in another country playing and that I won $50,000. It didn't feel real at all. We got the results back from the streaming viewership of the season one finals, where we saw that 200,000 concurrent players had tuned in to watch the game. So many people tuned in and were like, oh my gosh, these are numbers I've never seen before. And of course now that's like, regular season games are not that big, world championships are millions of people. At the end of season one, these guys were putting in huge hours, but they didn't have paychecks. It wasn't a career yet. A lot of the infrastructure necessary to have a sporting ecosystem really hadn't come together yet. And so 
it was a huge career risk. Kita有点,你刚才一条腿 一起做乖的人啊,跑也做乖。啊,這樣,這樣,這樣,這樣,這樣,這樣,這樣,這樣,這樣,這樣,這樣,這樣,這樣,這樣,這樣,這樣,這樣,這樣,這樣,這樣,
that's a weak region, guys. Like, come on, they're not really gonna be that good. They had a series against Mac Noon's team, Nash and Sword, and they just two open like nothing. We never considered TPA to be a real contender for Worlds, and then they just came out of nowhere. They are going to gain some huge ground here as they turn Moscow Fight Space into shambles. Huge game for BB here as he comes in to finish off this one with his team. This is not looking good for Moscow Five. Diamond Prox goes down. The inhibitor is open. The double kill comes out. Moscow Five looking very good right now. Taipei Assassins look to take down the last Nexus. Yeah, that that not look at our team. Also, very disappointed. Instead of being basically at a booth at DreamHack and people are sitting on folding plastic chairs and we're like, hey, I'm Freak, this is Riv, and we're going to cast some games. It's like, hey, welcome to the Season 2 World Championship with thousands of you in attendance and some actual production value. <laughs> For some people, TPA began to stand for the Taipei Americans because Koreans beat up TSM, so whoever could beat up Azibu Frost became the American hope. Nobody thought TPA was going to win because Azibu Frost is Azibu Frost. They were the number one Korean team, and they whooped everybody else that they were facing. 他们阿朱法斯的当初他们的队伍就是上路跟舍佛非常有名，他们上路是帅，然后舍佛是就是很当时最强的舍佛。Made life. He starts on towards Stanley. He's going to show himself, and that's going to be the stun coming straight down. He's going to have plenty of time to land that bandage shot. It's going to be first blood. Stanley's going to go down. It is going to be shy picking up first blood for Azumi Frost from the wound though at the back. Just he's cleaning up. Stanley, Stanley gets one. Stanley gets two. Beating gets the other one. That's going to be the double top. But he might fall for oh. this one. He gets the quadra kill. He gets the quadra kill off the back. And could Azumi Frost get a better turnaround than that? This looks to be the end for Azuma Frost. What an amazing way to open the World Finals. 54 kills, 42 minute victory. And that's how we got together. It was a bit hard. Nobody thought Korea could be beat. Nobody thought it was a possibility. Then, it was maybe that we played too well. 太好了，所以我们才可以就比较轻松的来完成。He's gonna hit him with the cleaver. Stanley's gonna get a jump. Nice. Stanley. Doesn't matter. Ultimate was. Balls. He's waxed away. Shockwave used on Cloud Devil. Oh! Shockwave's gonna. That's gonna be an Oracle burn from Toys. Beautiful, beautiful play by Toys. That's a single handedly take down Cloud Devil. Oh, Rapid Star X instantly. Rapid Star goes down. Woop trying to pull something out here. Stanley with the ball on him. He's gonna jump back on the road. Woop, Woop gonna get dropped. Side by Assassin are destroying. What might say assassinating Azumi Frost. I'm seeing on the screen. It is a surrender. surrender. How do you deal with this? This is the pressure moment. This is why you get paid as a pro player. Azuka Frost has had their backs against the wall many times. In the semifinals, they were down 1-0 and won the next two. How are they going to adapt? I was in the match, and that time I was just... I didn't feel any feeling. I just wanted to... The Gwoo was exhausted. Taipei Assassins are going to continue diving on this one. Gwoo with the Lulu ultimate is going to walk away from that. And again, oh, oh, beautiful stuff! Game is all we're doing. Not enough. There is no damage coming out from Azumi Frost. Side by itself to the Duna. Oh, the shockwave! Full thing comes out from BB Big Brother Kill. Shy goes down. Bad by Kill. Side by Assassin. Are the season two world champion?
国中的老师英文老师啊，第诶十几吼，安尼老师两个老师，甲个甲英文老师拢因拍来甲我恭喜，随拍啦。啊，普惠阿妈，哦，普惠冠军的世界冠军去美国安尼。哦，我报纸买，会去买到一部，唔知啥物报买无，红买了了去，我买三部起来，啊，啊，搁一部唔知啥物，拢总干咱五部，我咧买四部，无，啊，搁一部买无着，要去买人买了了。阿妈那时候还蛮高兴的，因为她那时候有邻居在讨论我，她就觉得哇，好光荣这样。哇，你看邻居，就是我去，他去剪头发，我妈去剪头发，然后他就说邻居也是，然后因为拿到世界冠军的我觉得这是算是所有职业选手的最大的梦想，就是拿到这个世界冠军。我就觉得这很光荣。所以我觉得我们在今年就很有机会再去挑战一次世界大赛。我觉得单一队伍如果可以拿到。两次以上的冠军，那就是真的是非常，就是会让人们嫉妒一辈子。重新적으로막좀힘든게좀나쁜점인것같아 It'd be great if my team won worlds. That'd be amazing. 还有下一次，我说还有二十三到你过去，我说你要加油，哪里没有搞好，你自己看到吧。我可以玩这轮。Piglet is out of his mind this game. The season three world champion. Let's go, Baker. Baker has been released, everyone. 
광진이는 아기 때 마마보이 <웃음> 어, 엄마 부르면서 떨어지지 않는 아기 나은경 네가 큰 거야 이제 큰 거야 지금이 그 장래 희망을 적어내라면은 프로 게이머를 항상 적어냈어서 도대체 이게 프로 게이머라는 게 뭐였는지. 그게 제가 어릴 적 때부터 엄청 게임을 좋아했었어요. 근데 어쩌다가 TV 프로그램에서 그 게임하는 대회를 보고 아 이건 제가 해야겠, 내가 해야겠다 이렇게 생각이 들어서 했는데. 근데 컴퓨터가 고등학교까지 아마 몇 대는 버렸을 거예요. 제가 이걸 버리면 안 하려나, 이걸 버리면 안 하려나. 그래도 불편하게 보자. <웃음> 잘 편하게 이제 편하게. 그 광진이가. 컴퓨터가 없으면 자꾸 밖에 나가서 그 담배 냄새 많이 나는 PC 방 가서 그 게임을 하고 그러니까. 안녕히 계세요. 어? 또 보자. 어찌 됐든 뭐몇 그 살까지 이거를 할 언제까지 이거를 할지는 모르겠지만 하여튼 지 꿈이 가정이 그 그래, 그다지 화목하지가 못했죠. 화목하지도 못했고 경제 사정도 많이 어려웠고요. 완전 막 밤늦게 막 새벽 늦게 들어오고 고등학교 때 그러니까 이렇게 밥도 안 먹으면서 게임하고 밤 늦게까지 하면서 밥도 안 먹고 뭐 늦게까지 자고 <웃음> 형이 좀 이렇게 그런 안 좋은 일들을 많이 막 이렇게 해, 했어가지고 그나 집에 남자가 두 명인데 뭐 나라도 뭐 잘하자 이래서 우리 우리 춤추면서 왔어. 좋은 점은 사람들이 나를 알아줘서 내가 좀 이제 뭐, 뭐 이걸 못했으면 아예 몰라 모르는 사람일 수도 있는데 이걸 하면서 난 나를 알 사람은 알고 게 아니라 내가 웃기라고 티글렛 월드 디즈니 하기 전에 무슨 말은 디즈니한테 놀러 간다고 개구리가 울고 있었는데. 네, 칠, 저희 나라는 좀 실력에 무슨 포, 프로가 되면 프로를 하려면 우선 거의 좀 모든 걸좀 포기해야 되는 것 같아요. 좀 정신적으로 막좀 힘든 게좀 나쁜 점인 것 같아요. 그래도 막 원래 모, 그래도 몸이 막 이렇게 말르진 않았었는데 이걸 다시 하면서. 살이 와, 완전 많이 빠진 거 빠졌어요. 한 10kg 정도. 정말 좀 안타, 안타까운 현실이죠. 네. We're more or less the hope of North America, apparently. So there's a lot of people jumping on our bandwagon, basically now, becoming our fans because they want North America to do well at Worlds, and they think that we are their best hope to do that. We are the underdogs of this tournament, actually, relative to Europe, China, and Korea, at least. So we're seen as the weaker region. Going from being no one and being a nothing team to making it in was definitely the hardest part for us. My favorite moment was probably when we qualified for LCS, because it was the second time we tried. The first time we failed pretty horribly, and that was really depressing. So we came into it again. Uh, with better mindset, and we made it that time. Ever since then, we weren't really known for anything until we came into this split, which is the summer split of 2013. We took first place in it. We were just basically getting more popular and more popular. Our numbers and social media sites are just going up and up. We've been winning everything. We went 25 and 3, and we won regionals. We were like destroying the whole scene. It feels weird, but cool at the same time to have fans. Since we first entered the LCS, everyone has always had high expectations for us, no matter what. I definitely never thought that I was going to be a professional gamer when I was younger, and since I started playing League of Legends professionally, I never thought I'd be playing at Worlds for North America. I don't think Europe's much better than us, I don't think China's much better than us, but I do think the Koreans are better. They just breed talent over there because that's what they've been doing for the past 10 years, whereas most of the people in North America have been able to do that. Playing against SKT 
would be really sweet because I would get to play versus Faker. But I would prefer to have easier routes to the finals if that's possible. It'd be great if my team won Worlds. Like the North American team just wins and like no one can bash North America anymore. So that'd be like, that'd be amazing. <laughs> Yeah, 当时就很小嘛，不懂事也，反正就感觉少了一点什么吧。就觉得，嗯，在游戏上我就就比较开心吧，不用去想那么多烦恼的事情吧。觉得生的他到小小的去，他就会去，一下没人送也没有人，他就
all the big names in, in League of Legends esports, and, and uh, it's been really cool to watch them grow. These are gamers who love playing games and really do what they do primarily for passion. And they feel like they're living the dream because they are living the dream. Once you start killing some minions, but once you start trading with your enemy laner, you kind of forget about the fact that you're in front of like so many people. If we can understand what the other regions are doing, just so we understand their meta, their champion picks, and their banning and drafting phase, and doing the same things or doing better things, then I think we have a good chance of doing well at Worlds. We just talk to each other before the game starts. We will start singing random songs. Try our best to like laugh and like calm each other's nerves. I want to win, and I hope we can win, and I think we can. So in the first quarter final of the World Championship is going to be Cloud9 up against Fnatic. Now Cloud9 is the first seed coming out of America and uh, Fnatic is the first seed coming out of Europe. Fnatic swept the group stage. It's the first time we're going to see Cloud9 on the stage. It's also a huge battle between North America and Europe. A lot of people kind of feel that this will establish his strong region. Cloud9 splitting up once again. This is not a place race they want for sure. Fnatic, they're not done here because they still see two members backing off the top lane. They could go straight for the inhibitor turret. They will. They're going to go right for this. There is still an Ash and a Sona in the lane. They just got back to base. The turret goes down. Now Cloud9 engages. They go for Pekka and he's not really the right target because the struggle mode is going to bounce Meteor's up. That's going to be high going down. Massive kill for Fnatic here. See, Sneaky, he's going to get dropped as well for Shadows simply saved the life. It takes Cyanide down, but four members of Fnatic are still alive in the base, and three members of Cloud9 are already dead. Cloud9 was so indecisive in Now Fnatic had just swept the first game. It was close, but at the end they were very convincing in closing it out. Cloud9 really had some thinking to do when they first picked Fizz and expect a counter pick with Twisted Fate. Didn't turn out very well. I kind of wonder if they feel bad about that pick. But it is going to be high, going aggressive. Urchin Strike is available on Pekka. You can see he's already used the Ignite. He's going to take him very low. He got him! First one! Oh, yes. so happy. Yes. Oh, he got Pekka. Cloud9 will close this game out surely. There's nothing Fnatic can do. We're going to game three, ladies and gentlemen. And North America strikes back. And so Cloud9 takes the second game, and we're on to game three. So the bottom turret. It's going to be an even traded turret, but Fnatic can keep going on the inner here. Fnatic has endless aggression. It is consistently catching Cloud9 off guard. The push. Fnatic is everywhere. Fnatic only invades red. Red. Uh, only when they're on red side. We lost very badly. I think we got maybe one kill in that entire game. Yeah, we didn't get shut out. We got a kill. We got like two. We got two kills. Good. We are ill prepared. We weren't ready for everything that they did. In the end, it was our fault. I'm out here to watch us get destroyed. Did you hear the chants of Cloud9? Yes. For me, losing sucks not just because I didn't win, but because the way we lost was kind of sad. And while I'm not a sore loser or I get very upset from losing, it's just not that great compared to winning. Because it was just kind of like, I'm rooting for the team that beat us, so we can say we lost to the champions. <laughs> Two very big rivals coming out of China, and we're going to find out who's better. It's China's number one seed, Royal Club, versus the second seed from China, OMG. 63% of you believe it's going to be OMG. 
可能最害怕自己不果断吧，然后，呃，有些盲目自信吧，有时候，呃，有时候就是，呃，就把敌人放大嘛，觉得对手很强，然后就会丧失了自我嘛，就会比较压力大嘛，就会丧失自我。最怕的就是。And I think a lot of the importance of Renekton in these matchups, actually, they're going right in. They're going straight in on towards Tabe. He's going to have to flash, puts down the stun as well. Lovely flashes in though. He's going to get Tabe very low. Finishes off there. First foot going over. Meanwhile, White so incredible. This is very interesting. OMG is sacrificing turret pressure for farm on Jax. Go going has been freezing the bottom lane for the past minute or so. While Royal is mercilessly pushing this middle lane. Got the damage from the side. Here comes Go going. That's another kill. The double coming down for Cool. It's not over yet either. As Lovely picks one up. And being a massive factor in these team fights as Royal just brute forces their way in as OMG is completely contained within their base. This could be an attempted end by Royal. Oh, the rest of the there team. Is. There is the fast timbers coming in. Not really doing what they would have hoped from it. And Royal back away to the steps. There's the Stranglethorns going down as White gets in. To the base, there's the ace in the hole. Who's he gonna pick that one up? That's already one man down. Can they finish off the tower? This is bad news. This is gonna be game number one going over to Royal Club. 嗯，就我在玩游戏的时候，我父母应该大，嗯，都不在身边吧。我很单纯啊，说我会被骗啊，说外面很多骗子、啊，就还是很。很不相信这门行业。就是每次他比赛就要看，看了一遍又一遍，还看那个通报，就是这样的。除了家里电视都不看，就看他这个视频啦。Down go going, he's getting obliterated. There's a three man crescendo coming in as well. Tommy picks up a kill, but they're only going one way right now. Lovely, can he get away from this one? Tumble comes down, and that's a triple wow. kill for the main. Five for zero, a clean ace. Even though that initiation seemed forced by Royal, that's how confident they are. Uzi is coming in from the backside. Surprise! Here comes the main kill for White. Sans not gonna escape this one. They focus down Uzi, but look at him. He's still alive. He's still surviving. He stays alive. Ace for Royal Club. What an amazing fight coming out. Oh of Uzi. my God! Right there, Royal just ace OMG. They beat them four times in a row. They're going for five. They have minions in the mid lane. Super minions, in fact. They're going for the win. This is going to be a win for Royal Club. They are going to take down their Chinese rivals, two to zero. We don't want to be tourists, you know. We don't want to come LA the first round to play the games and just go by. Good goodbye. I love every team in this S3 tournament because I. Always thought、uh, Koreans are the best, and the second place is China. But to be honest, I think every team in the world is super strong. 嗯、呃，我觉得去年 S 三的比赛，嗯、呃，成功和失败各一半一半吧。我觉得，就是第二场就打的可能互相之间就有点开很烦躁，没有静下心来。然后，可能一到一旦到了那种。紧要的时候，可能就会缺少一点经验吧。嗯，就没办法去那个正常思考嘛，没有发挥出我们正常的水平吧。就可能当时就不太果断，可能就有点心虚了。失败可能就是让我们正视自己吧。嗯，最大的成就，我觉得就是这些经历嘛，一路走来，我觉得，嗯，可能可能有进步了许多吧，我觉得。항상이겨야죠그런수밖에없을것같아항상기쁠라면In the top half of the bracket, it is the number one seed from the Southeast Asia and Taiwan region, the Gamma Bears. They will be taking on Korea's SK Telecom T1.
왜냐하면 마, 이게 저는 그러니까 게임을 이겨도 만약에 제가 라인전을 치잖아요 라인전이 좀 불리하거나 상대방 쪽에서 좀 유리하면 은 제가 게임을 이긴 것 같지가 않아요 응원하는 사람들이 그 만두하고 그 피글레 그거 이렇게 뭐지? 어머 뭐 우리 광진이가 정말 음, 저 나라에서도 저렇게 알아주는 사람이야? 에이 설마 저 광진이가 엄마 이제 용돈 쓰라고 조금씩 줄때 생각에 제 실감이 나요 아... 근데 오판 3승인데 3대0으로 깔끔하게 이기면 좋지만 당연히 SK가 그렇게 쉬운 상대는 템 맞추려고 계속 집 갔었네 아... Fanatic's mid player XPK is very, very good. Uh, I think he is really, really good. I, but I am very confident that White can beat him in mid lane. Hey! Ruby going down, cyanide, and so as to do what they can in the last ditch effort! They fly onto White, they take down White. If they can get Uzi, they may get the damage out, but the DPS is still there, D-Man. They're moving on to the Nexus. That was the big if, and they could not do it. Uzi is alive, Uzi is doing damage. It's Royal Club going through to the Grand Final. Against SKT is a really great team. Piglet, one of the best ADs in team fights. I only know that we are facing a huge, 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 huge enemy. Yes. 
그러니까 막 혼자 막 이렇게 막 무대 같은 거를 막 혼자 자주 막 상상을 하고 그래요. 엄청 그리고 그 경기장이 좀 엄청 유명한 분들만 갈수 있는 거라고 좀 들었어요. 그래서 근데 저희가 만약 간다면 좀뭐 우리도 뭐좀 유명해진 것 같고. Now I'm happy to hear you guys clap, but I'm not sure you're loud enough for this. Okay. 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 For the players to take to the rift for round one of tonight's world final and while many picked SKT as the pre-tournament favorite to be in tonight's final Royal Club has taken out two heavily favored teams to make it here to the Staples Center and impress their experts along the way they're the best team in China with a chance of becoming the best team in the world this is where it gets interesting. Faker is absolutely level six, and Bengi's gonna try to combo with the gang. He goes in, does he manage to knock him up? Yes, he does. Surely the shockwave comes in, but it does not matter. First blow, Faker. Just execution right there, Resmati. Immediately he is gonna go down, and now Uzi's is in trouble. He's gonna get one kill. No, he can't. He he they go down for Faker, they do commence the crescendo, but they haven't got him down yet. He's gonna run away from this one. Will finally get caught out. They're just dropping oh. like flies. In one of the world finals. Going to SK Telecom T1. Full control for the Korean team. Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. 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 걔네가 또 걔네가 또 오리하면 그냥 저희 그냥 어 그거 걔네가 쉬운 게 그라가스 이번에 배날 수도 있고. 没有不是说怪谁是我们没有我们打法跟选人很有问题我们的优势就是我们无畏四但是我们就没有打出来过一次你老是把对方想的这么厉害是我们自己打法出现问题了我们打了你看这么多先手我们一开始在四个人进攻
Ruff. That Damn. is extremely late for Uzi. He needed oh. that at 13 minutes, and White goes in while Caitlyn's not there. Playful Tricks are up and down. The crescendo does stop the reinitiation. It's Piglet. Nobody's touching Piglet. They're all running away. Baker makes the fight continue. Puts Godlike in the fray, and they're going to take down the turret. Oh, oh my god. Piglet is an assassin. SK Telecom are just rolling through. The Nexus turrets are potentially going to go down. This could be a 20-minute game for SK Telecom. They will be the Season 3 World Champions here at the Staples Center. This best of five with a win. And after that, there was no stopping the Korean powers. SKT Telecom come into this game saying, you know, the Champions Cup would be lonely at home if we didn't bring back another one. So they find the Summoner's Cup and it will be placed in the SKT house right next to their win from Korea. Oh, Ladies and gentlemen, the hype train is real. What do you feel? 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 哇哇！你连到了技术也输了，三比零什么的。世界不可能有会打赢 SKT。韩韩国人真真的太屌了，打。不是刚，我分了呗，分了呗，都不签了。二流一分，去拉那个。啊，一一落开，像一落开都阿拉伯。可能你在你眼里拿了拿了一个很轻松的一百万，但是也是经过很多的艰苦，很多的努力，他们值得拥有这一份荣耀。最近最后一场比赛。对，我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我
시계에 낮은 그런 거인데 요새는 다시 또 넘어 삼성이랑 SK 지금 저희가 썸머 팀 썸머 하는 도중인데 지금 보면은 저희 조에 삼성 화이트하고 삼성 블루가 있는데 그두 팀이 제일 걸림돌이 될것 같아요 왜냐면 저희가 It's very difficult in any sport to maintain that position of such extreme dominance because basically every time you play a team you're giving them a ridiculous amount of information for them to learn from and you're learning virtually nothing at all. It's much easier to catch up than it is to stay on top. I'm就是 韩国跟中国吧如果你要赢韩国队伍或是全世界那种很强的职业队伍就是你一定要牺牲你的休息时间因为他们无时无刻都在练习然后如果你没有练习的话就可能连对上他们机会都没有 I don't think Europe's much better than us. I don't think China's much better than us. But I do think the Koreans are better. They've been grown to do this for like the past decade to like 10 to 15 years. They've been doing esports already. The way I see it, the season four is that there is no room for mistakes. Even in Europe, everyone is stepping up their game. But like, make a note for Drake? this, like the last three minutes. Can we go Drake now? Lula's then I told my family, I'm gonna quit my job to be a pro gamer. They're like, we have never seen you earn any money from this. You're not quitting your job. You have to keep going into that supermarket and work your ass off. I decided to go against my parents, which they're pretty mad about. But once I started earning some money, they started being okay with it. And now my mom watches my games every single weekend. Yeah, yes, that's six years already. I actually never decided I wanted to be a pro player. It more sort of just happened. Keep trading picks with Altis and shit. Rick had recognized me from SolarQ and he asked me if I wanted to make a team with him. I started streaming back before I even got popular on a team. I think I sat for four or five months with 20 viewers. And I slowly built up a viewer base. It is unique for esports to be able to stream the games you're playing and how you're playing. Okay, Imagine Messi with a camera on him 24-7. It's working out I do think about the game pretty much all the time. There's not a lot of other things on my mind, honestly. Fragen is probably one of the most confident people around me. He's changed from being shy to becoming a little cocky and then toning it down. Going from spring split into summer split, there was a huge change. We started getting a coach, an analyst too, and they helped us a lot with understanding the game and what we're actually supposed to do. Right now, we have really good synergy in the team. Like pretty much all of us know how each other reacts to the game and what each other wants to do in the game. So we can play to each other's strengths rather than just playing the game and then hope for the best. I actually think we got a good shot at doing well at Worlds. Winning means pretty much everything to me. It's like, that's why this team is made too. It's because we all want to win. <laughs> I think every single team Korea sends 
is going to be in contention for the world championship. It's just so competitive over there right now. Korea has already established a really deep cultural understanding and appreciation for esports. And this is really driven by the success of StarCraft in Korea. Starcraft was being shown in, in at these massive venues in front of massive audiences. If you were in Korea, like you could see Starcraft on just regular everyday television, which was like so cool. The ecosystem that was pioneered by the success of Starcraft as an esport in Korea. That's one of the key reasons that the League of Legends scene leveled up so quickly uh, and really scared the heck out of everybody else around the world. I would compare the Korean professional scene to the Western, North American, and European scene and say that the Korean scene is still more professional. Uh, this, it's something that we're just trying to catch up to in the West. 정말 뭐 물론 한국 팀들도 그 팀들마다 여러 가지 스케줄에 따라 다 다르겠지만 기본적으로 먹고 자고 빼고는 거의 게임을 하신다고 보면 돼요. 한국 같은 경우. A lot of the Korean players can't have girlfriends. They're allowed a girlfriend if they win a season of champions. Then they're allowed to have one after. That's when they've kind of achieved themselves. But before that, if they're on an organization, no, you can't have a girlfriend. You have to play League of Legends 14 to 16 hours a day. Korea's play style will be spot on. They will constantly uh, mimic exactly what the other teams are trying to do and try and do it better. They can almost jump into anyone's play style when they want to. They'll play defensive when necessary, or they'll break into a Chinese play style, which is dive your face all day long. It's already been two kills, however. Korea has just acted quickly under this one. 제가 솔직하게 말씀드리면. 어, 모든 관계자분들 뿐만 아니라 그러니까 거의 거의 대다수 관계자분들 뿐 아니라 거의 대다수 팬들도 제 생각에는 어떤 한국 팀이든 일단 롤드컵에 나가는 한국 팀이면 다 롤드컵 우승은 할수 있다고 봐요. 한국 팀들 간의 경합이 일 거다 이런 식으로 예상을 하기 때문에 Faker, uh, as a player, like, right, speechless, right? It's just kind of astounding. People who, like, see Faker on camera kind of think he's just a machine, right? Faker's the player that, even if his team is losing, you can never count out the fact that he will just do something that makes SK Telecom win the game when they have no business winning it. Well, Faker is still Faker, the best in the world of mid -league. I very clearly remember SK Telecom's first game. These guys are just totally new. Yeah, we have no idea what to expect from these guys. Faker started the game by solo killing Ambition in lane and just having insane roaming. Uh, a relatively weak lane. Whoa, whoa, Ambition! What? Faker just executes Ambition! And it was very clear very quickly that this guy was something special. And then he went on that season to have just ridiculously dominating performances, manhandling entire teams by himself. Oh, Chun Young. Oh, man. Faker. Faker has been released, everyone. That's right. Probably the most famous League of Legends play to have ever existed at this point was the Faker versus Ryu, Zed versus Zed out play. I'm like, even though I only have a bat on the floor, I think he's in the bed. Oh, Faker may be in trouble here, Deathmark. Tries to clean it up for Ryu. Oh, look at the cleanse, look at the moves. Faker, what was that? Faker with a huge what? play, the QSS. So Let's Ryu watch gets again. the drop onto Faker right there, gets him down to about a third what health. And we that? see the Deathmark come down. Right there from Ryu, the immediate cleanse. Oh. Look at the shadow swap. So the QSS removes the death mark, and then at this point he gets enough oh, damage with the flash oh, afterwards to chunk oh, him. Just Ryu tries to come in, but oh, here it goes we go. back to the living shadow Rolls again. Back. I mean, wow! You just saw that champion played to absolute perfection.
어, 저는 일단 제가 좀 지금보다 더 못해져서 다른 선수들한테 지게 되는 것이 가장 무서운데 어, 웬만하면 그냥 연습 많이 하면 그렇게 되지 않을 것 같아요 지금까지 상대했던 어떤 팀을 보나 힘들었을 때나 아니면 가장 강했던 상대나 SKT 밖에 기억 안 나고 아무래도 인포 선수 같은 경우에는 좀 솔직히 남이 조언을 해준 것도 중요하지만 스스로 자극을 받았을 때좀 열심히 하는 선수이기 때문에 자기 자신의 실력에 대해서 자기가 대회를 영상을 보고 자기 스스로가 근데 그, 그 시기라 그래야 되나 그런 게좀 있는데 제가 생각하기에 인프 선수만큼은 저희 팀에서 전 세계 최고의 <웃음> 원딜러라고 제가 자부할 수 있을 만큼 정말 잘하고요. 이번 롤드컵은 삼성 하이트 팀한테 어떤 의미가 있냐면 아무래도 작년 롤드컵 때 어떻게 보면 자신을 좀 강가했다 해다가 너무 야자가 본 것도 있고 그렇기 때문에 혹시 큰 그러니까 쓴맛을 봤었을 거예요. 자기들도 선수들도. 어, 일단 다른 사람들은 삼성이 롤드컵을 우승할 확률이 높다고 생각할 것 같아요 국내에서 어, 저는 근데 그렇게 생각하지 않고 저희가 좀더 열심히 하면 저희가 우승할 확률이 좀더 높을 것 같아요 되는 것도 아니고 그래서 지금은 약간 음, 좀 많이 힘든 시기인 것 같아요 제 인생에서 제일 중요한 시기이기도 하지만 제일 힘든 시기인 것 같아요. After the World Championship, SK Telecom K came back to Korea, went a perfect season. They went through an entire season of champions without losing a game. After the finals were over and they had won a perfect season, Piglet was crying because he felt he did not play well enough. Well, I'll be honest. I'm actually really sad right now. I'm about to cry because I, I just I played so horribly. I, I'm very discontent with how I played, and you can see it. And at this. This is Piglet. 우, 우시는 거 보셨잖아요. 피글 선수. 제가 그 이긴 거예요. 자기도 자기가 유리한 케이크를 잡고 그때 오피라고 가는 시비로 이기지 못했어요. 네, 우승 차이 유리해요. 쳐본 적도 없고 뭐, 뭐 정신적으로나 뭐 육체적으로 이제 뭐다 이제 버티기가 힘드니까 그래 버티기가 힘들어서 좀 힘든 것 같아요. 부진하고 있을 때는 상대 팀이. 그런 점을 보완해서 잘 이용하는 것 같아요. 일단 저한테는 지난 해는 처, 첫 번째 해여서 저의 기량을 확인할 수 있는 그런 해였는데 올해는 그 기량을 좀 이어나갈 수 있을지 그런 They've got a lot of stuff to get through here, but I think it's going to be an impact is all that stands between Najin Shield and a trip to the 2014 League of Legends World Championships. Can he defend? There's 30 seconds. It's not going to work. There's the first Nexus turret. There's the second. And there goes the Nexus. Najin Shield is going to Worlds. SKTK going down 3-1 to Najin White Shield. 스포츠판에서 보면은 강 팀들의 수명 시기는 보통 1년이라고 얘기해요. 그런 점에서 SKT 원 K의 전성기는 지났다는 얘기도 많아요. It's another year where the former world champions can't quite make it back. Yep, that's the curse, man. But tears of joy in the booth for Shield and tears of despair for SK Telecom K, and a god falls. 지금 그리고 하락세를 걷고 있고 하지만 또 어떻게 될지 모르기 때문에 이 판이 굉장히 재밌는 것 같고 다시 올라오기를 전 개인적으로 기대해 봅니다. 분명 Get ready world cuz Samsung Blue, Samsung White and Najin White Shield are coming to the 2014 League of Legends World Championships and you should be terrified.
Oh, he should have waited for the auto, no? Yeah. Then he would have killed him for sure. It was on the. He will turn. He will turn. Uh, there's too many minions, no? Who do you think has a better setup? Uh, I think Rocket has a really good setup, but the Alliance heroes are pretty good against all of them. Like they have uh, Oriana and Nami to disengage when they go in. I think that if you look at the background of all these pro gamers from many different countries around the world, that in spite of the very different personalities, introvert, extrovert, very cocky, very humble. They all share a dream of being the best at what they do, and they share a drive and a talent to get there. To give up a lot of times a normal life, to have that chance to be in the spotlight and to win is very admirable. At some point, I knew that the World Championship was going to be in Korea. This is the homeland of esports. This is where any esport player wants to go. Tedanazaneo, Bak. Tedanazaneo, Toy Nara, Chega Taiwo in the Nara, the Lino, Homsung Kunde. In Hanga, Bak Tony Pointer, there's the window from Japanese. Our goal is to win worlds. Like it might sound unrealistic to some people or whatever, but our goal is at the end of the day is to win the world championship. This is going to be hard, man. <laughs> this is going to be hard. <laughs> <laughs>